Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the What Podcast. This is a, um, I don't know, Russ, how, what are we going to call this? Are we back for season 75 or? <laughs> or uh, we're, still like in the, we're still in the tail end of season six. Yeah. Okay. So, Wrapping things up. So Wrapping uh, things up. Lord Taco, obviously. I'm Barry. You'll notice Brad is not with us. Uh, Brad is in New York getting ready for uh, Riot Fest. Uh, this weekend in Chicago, correct? That's correct. Yeah, but you and I had a big weekend, and yeah, um, what did we do? I just, I think we said it both days, Saturday and Sunday. But you know, here it is, a couple days later, and I still feel like what a perfect weekend. Uh, everything just went about as well as it could go. Yeah, it really did. Uh, of course, we're talking about Moon River Festival that just wrapped up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where we live. And um, this is what, the fifth year they've had it in Chattanooga? Since 2018. Started Since in 2014 in Memphis. Uh, Drew Holcomb um, started it. It outgrew him and the venue there. So he joined with AC Entertainment out of Knoxville, which at the time... Uh, was very and their co-founders of Bonnaroo, which is our you know dear and dear to us, but they also were booking a couple of venues in Chattanooga, so they have a Chattanooga connection. And um, Drew partnered with them. They looked all over the state at places to move it and decided on Chattanooga. And we've talked about this before. They looked at several locations, even here in Chattanooga, including Coolidge Park, which has only had, to my knowledge, this is still the only gated, ticketed event inside that park. Yes. And I know when they proposed it in 2017, uh, there were a lot of, you know, doubters. Uh, you're going to destroy the landscaping. What happens if you break something? And uh, they met with the city, and they had answers for all of that. And the city, to their credit, said, uh, come on. And... When I say it was a perfect weekend, we got rain. They had to evacuate uh, the site for about an hour and a half. Yeah, uh, nothing like last year where, no. you know, Sunday just got washed out and canceled. So, right. yeah, about an hour last or so year, later, we were back. Last year, it had rained days prior, so it was already a wet, you know, uh, field. Uh, this year, it was very dry. It took the water, no problem. It was the lightning that caused the real evacuation. Yeah. Um but got to spend a lot of time with you, got to see a lot of uh, Camp Nut Butter regulars, um, you know, our good friend Chrissy Mintz, who is one of my favorite people in the world, got to hang out with her and her mom and dad, who were just as cool, um, and her eight-year-old daughter, who I can't wait to see what that girl grows up to be, because she's already <laughs> a fireball. Um, yeah, but we, 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 we get to see a lot of people. Uh, we also ran into Lindsay. Uh, yep. And Otta. Yep. Yep. So it's almost like and a little bit of a homecoming when it comes to our Bonnaroo family. But also uh, a lot of the uh, AC people, um, mm -hmm. while waiting for the rain, ran into Ted, uh, the president of AC, and Brad Parker, who will be a guest on our show in the coming weeks, along with Corey Smith, to sort of recap... Uh, if you're longtime listeners, you know they were on with us last year to talk about the proposed changes to the camping um, experiences and, and the a la carte sort of way that they wanted to do it. And they're going to come and talk to us about how it went. And uh, Brad told me Sunday, and I think he talked to you as well, that uh, they have a lot to talk about, um, things they learned, yeah. things they're going to do. So very excited about that. Um, got to got to say hi to Rebecca and Megan from Larkin Poe, who put on a great show. Um, yes, hey, what, was was your, one of the best. what was your favorites? What were your uh, highlights for me? Was uh, Flip Turn for sure. Yep. yep. Um, really, that Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors that Goodbye Road set. You know, yeah, that was kind of a, a surprising set. Jude and the Lion was really good. Um, first Aid Kit. I mean, just there wasn't a bad show all weekend. No. Yeah. And it was fun. Like I said, it just like, you know, couldn't couldn't plan. I uh, got to see Drew several times mm -hmm. both days and uh, actually talked to him about the Judah and the Lion show. And, and Judah is going to be our uh, first guest. 
We we had interviews uh, you and I did with the help of uh, Brian Stone and uh, my daughter Grace and son-in-law Zach. Grace uh, got put in the, here. Here's a phone. Take video. <laughs> Go. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm glad she did because we really yeah. Uh, yeah that extra footage we got was uh, worked out great. Yeah, she knows what she's doing, and I, and I knew she would. Um, so, but that worked out great. Got to hang out with her and my, I'm our grandson. And uh, yesterday was our wedding anniversary. Kelly and I, we had forgotten. My, oh, congratulations. Our, <laughs> our oldest daughter is the one who said, hey, happy anniversary. And we were like, well, who's anniversary? Oh, it's ours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, it was funny. We both laughed. But um, so let's get into the, the, I mean, this is uh, September, so it's a fall festival. I guess you're right. Technically, it is kind of the end of season six. We'll start. We are kind of wrapping it up. Speaking of the end, before we get into the interview, do you have any, what have you got planned for coming up next month? You got anything? Because I got a couple updates. What do you mean uh, for the show? Yeah. Uh, well, I, like I said, Brad and uh, Corey, we still have to talk to David Bruce or get to. I shouldn't say have to. I can't wait yeah. to talk to him. I talked to him today. He's he's ready to come on. There are um, uh, a couple of other uh, people that I've heard um, heard of or through from various uh, sources that I'd love to have on as well. Um, yeah. So um, I, go ahead. I'm you, attending. I'm I'm going to Cave Fest at the Caverns next month. Oh, nice! In October. Um, that's the second, second festival they've done there. The cave fest, it's kind of a, you know, bluegrass type festival. Um, but it's camping and I missed it last year cause I had no bus. So this will be my first time going this year. This is up at the cavern about an hour from here, right? About an hour from here. Yeah. Pretty much on the way to, uh, yep. uh, Manchester. If you've come to Manchester through Chattanooga at all, you've driven, you've seen the signs. As you've you passed it. Yep. And I've passed Mountain. it many times. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and what a, also nope. later next month, I'm going to have the bus in the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. Oh, are you? Yes. With the and, B-52s and performing. And the B-52s are performing, that's right. And I am I am calling in every favor and chit and whatever I can think of because I want to see the B-52s again. So. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Good for you. That's cool that, that the bus will be in there. Rightfully, yeah, so I'm excited. Rightfully uh, so. Get, get to finish the year out with a couple more exciting things, so... That's Those are my neat. updates. Very neat. So let's talk about Moon River. So it came here in 2018, as I said, and uh, Judah of Judah and the Lion performed that year. As a, There were three of them. They've since uh, lost the, uh, the banjo player, lost one of the members. But that, that moment for me, and I've covered live music in Chattanooga since for 40 years, and we've had a lot of big moments, so I don't want to overstate that, that it was the biggest or the best or anything like that. But as a, for a live music festival, and I know I'm going to probably insult some people, and I don't mean to, <laughs> we've had our Riverbend Festival for four decades, uh, and they've had a lot of big acts and a lot of big crowds. Um, I mean, going back to the Pointer Sisters early on and then Leonard Skinner. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a huge festival, but you wouldn't say it was sort of the young people's festival or the, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm going to insult people, but it it was, you know, it's not the pretty people festival. It also was inexpensive tickets for years were $25 up till the end. They were like $45. You got eight days, a hundred acts. It was a lot more like a county fair, and I have nothing against county fairs, but it was not what you would say a, a new music festival, right? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't current hits. No, for me growing up, I mean, it was always it's your parents' music, basically. Yeah, it was either bands on, on the way up or on the way down. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when Judah and the Lion had Drew Holcomb come out and um, perform. Well, first of all, the crowd was was 10,000 people, and they were all dancing. It was an amazing sight, and then they did Mr. Brightside. And um, I remember thinking, well, so put it another way. So there were a lot of questions going into that first Moon River. Will people show up? 
Can the park handle it? Can the city handle it? Do we know what we're doing? Um, with $125 a ticket, you know, that was outrageous, just the thought of it. I mean, lots of people were saying nobody will do that. Not only did they buy those tickets, but about 55% of them came from out of town. Mm -hmm. And a large portion of those folks had never been here before. So that was amazing. Then you get down there and you see how cool that venue is with the sun going down on the river and the museum across the way and the bridges. It was just beautiful, right? I mean, you say, yeah, oh, it's picture perfect. It's so easy to navigate, right? I mean, just get, even getting there is mm -hmm. beautiful because you got to go yeah. across those bridges. And then f to see 10,000 people singing along to Mr. Brightside, um, it was it was the moment for me. It was a it was a yes, this can happen here. Yeah, it did a happen. Confirming here. moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and to yeah. go back, they sold out tickets in what five hours. <laughs> yeah, for that something very first uh, one. unheard of. Yeah, yeah. So all and they of sold the out this year too. In uh, about five days, four or five days. Yeah. So all of the questions were answered uh, for me in that one moment. And we talked to. Uh, I asked. I had actually seen Drew Holcomb. Uh, a couple hours before our interview and I kind of asked him and he said, absolutely. That was, that was a moment. That was a confirming moment for him as well. Obviously the ticket sales were, but, but to get up there and uh, I won't give it away, but Judah has a funny story about yeah, Drew yeah. and, and, uh, and the show, right? Yeah. And I'm glad Brian Stone was there because, you know, we sort of get into a little bit of Chattanooga music history and lore just because of, uh, you know, we've had some venues that have opened and closed over the years, and it's just kind of a stepping stone every way, of, every way you go. Right. To Brian, get to that moment you're talking about. Brian's a little bit younger than me. He's about your age, uh, but he's a he's a music fan like you are, and I I am, and he's worked in radio and done podcasts for years, so he's got a good sense of you know that history. And so I was glad to have him on. Obviously, glad to have the help. He always helps us with these things, sort of. Yeah make sure the sound levels are good and microphones are where they should be. Um, but he also jumps in when he has something to contribute, and, and we wanted him to contribute in particular for this conversation. So um, it was fun to hear Judah talk about the moment. He remembered uh, very vividly, uh, talks about Chattanooga. And um, I don't know. It was our last interview of the weekend, but we're going to go with it first because of, because of this conversation. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, it was the last interview we did. It was kind of late on Sunday that when we got this one done. But um, yeah, out of all of them, I think this one just, well, they were all good. But yeah. Yeah. So just to tease, we also spoke with Noah Cyrus um, and we talked to all the guys from Flip Turn. And mm -hmm. uh, once again, Taco hits a home run. So you'll have to wait and hear from that one. But uh, it's worth <laughs> it. It's funny. Um, so like I said, it was just a great, great weekend, a lot of fun, a lot of great music. Um, they're so accommodating, right? I mean, it's, yes. Uh, Sue and everybody us. there that, uh, you know, they're great to us and, and we love working with them. Yeah. Sue makes it easy. And, uh, we made her work a little more this year than usual, <laughs> but she, she made, took it all in stride and made sure yep. we have every, had everything we needed, which, you know. I, I you can't just I can't thank them enough. Um, I think they appreciate what we do, and we sure appreciate what they do. So that was great. So yeah. All right. Anything else before we turn it over to Judah? I think I think we're good. I think we can just uh, yeah. Let's hear from Judah. All right. This is this is fun, and thank you guys for listening. And again, we got a couple of more interviews over the next two weeks after this and then we uh, start in with the uh, live nation c3 guys and we start talking about next year I yeah it won't be long oh before we go do you remember you said you know a lot of people come from out of town do you remember we sat down under the bridge that day yeah yeah i'm glad you mentioned that i was going yeah. to it at some point yeah i happened to sit down because i had to sit down and a uh, very nice uh, young woman um we just sort of chatted, and she's from uh, Emma. Uh, she's from Saskatchewan, Canada, and mm -hmm. flew down here because 
She said, there are two bands that I think are about to blow up, and they're both on this lineup, and I wanted to see them, and they were Flip Turn and uh, Marcus King, right? I think. Yes, uh, those were her two top picks yeah. that she had to come. Yeah, she flew down here and, uh, yeah, just traveled alone. Yeah. Uh, didn't come with anybody. Staying, going to stay through about several days and, mm -hmm. and just sort of see the sights and eat good food and, and hang out and... Uh, that those are the kinds of things. I mean, everything adds up, but those are the fun things about these festivals, right? I mean, yes, uh, just saying hello and striking up a conversation, and uh, yeah, good for her. I hope she had yeah. a great time. Yeah, I hope she's listening, and you know, maybe she'll write in and and give us a recap of what she thought. But yeah, That'd I mean, be great. I, I just, yeah, unbelievable can... to just fly from another country to come to the, I mean you and I it's in our backyard so <laughs> it's nothing for us to just hop in the car and drive a few minutes but uh yeah I can't imagine putting in all that travel time yeah but that's uh, a commitment she, it is a big commitment and she was great yeah you're right uh, if she's watching you you know obviously you, you can find our uh we have an email uh please reach out we'd love to have you on to talk about uh, your experience mm -hmm. and maybe some of your other ones I you know I get the feeling this isn't the first uh, road trip she's taken so <laughs> yeah that'd be, that'd be fascinating so all right let's uh let's hear from judah all right hey everybody welcome back we're back at moon river this is barry i'm with lord taco We've got brian stone and we have our special guest judah from judah and the lion thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us yeah thanks so much for having me this is uh for me, the second time that I've seen you at this festival, and I want to talk about that. Um, and I, I, Brian has been kind enough to be producing our show, but he's also a, a bit of a music historian in Chattanooga too. So I don't want to overstate this, but I don't want to understate it either. I think that show you guys did in 2018, when Drew Holcomb came out and you did uh, Mr. Brightside, for me was a pretty important moment in Chattanooga Festival history. Um, I remember looking out at that crowd, which was huge, and watching all the kids jumping up and down with their hands in the air, thinking, this is a different moment for Chattanooga. Do you remember the that show? <laughs> yes, that, that was... Uh... <laughs> That moment specifically, we actually were just talking about it because um, Drew and Elliot, they're going to come up tonight on another cover uh, to kind of full circle that moment because it was hilarious because uh, the song Mr. Brightside, which a lot of people know, obviously, um, but I don't think Drew got one lyric right, <laughs> 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 but it didn't matter at all. It was like, I'm coming, I'm coming out of my cage and I'm doing it just fine. He just kind of started <laughs> screaming. Um and yeah, I mean, w this is our, uh, we, coming coming from Memphis when we played it the first time to Chattanooga, it was like, um, it was really special to, to share in that Chattanooga year. Uh, to, I think it was 2018. It and, was. Um, yeah, just, I don't know, just being a Cookville kid, a Tennessee native, traveling to Chattanooga all the time as a, as a kid, um, playing college baseball with a Macaulay boy and a Baylor boy. It's like Chattanooga has this really sweet spirit about it. And so that moment um and even tonight it's really special for us yeah i don't think you were here 2018 i don't think so brian you were here but you, you, brian stone was here you don't remember that moment or that show I, I don't remember that exact moment but i do remember the the wave of the crowd i mean they were they were into it and you i was new to your music at the time and and doing research then and and even uh well, every year before we get ready for things like this, I joke and say, like, you, you and Drew are the house band. Like, it seems like you guys are here every uh, every year. I don't think it's been every year. Is it something you want, like, planned? Like, hey, let's let's do this. I mean, you said you're a Belmont guy. Are you still in Nashville? Is that where you call home? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're still in Nashville primarily. Um, so we've done a handful of tours. to run down to Chattanooga and play a show, I don't guess, if you don't get anything No, it's so on. fun for us. Um, yeah, 2018 was the last time that we played it. Um, so it's been, at, I guess, five years since. Oh, well, then I'm totally wrong on it. Since they then, play but every year. <laughs> but well, so. It's, just, it's in the same family. Like, we, sure. Drew and Ellie are, are close close buds of ours, and they've um, we've gone on tours together and yada, yada, yada. But. 
So what I'm, I mean, for, for listeners out there, to, so I'm not, you know, they like, you know, what am I talking about? So, I mean, I've done this for a long time. We've had big moments. We've had shows, and Brian, that's why I wanted you to be involved. We've had big shows at, I mean, Leonard Skinner played our Riverbend Festival, and I remember commenting to the guy who booked it, if you were ever going to rob a trailer park, tonight's the night, because there's nobody home. <laughs> I mean, it was huge. So we've had big shows. We've had Jack White selling out at Trek 29. But as a festival, seeing the kids and the size of that crowd, loving what you guys were doing, just felt like a move forward festival-wise. And I guess that's what I'm and, trying and, to And And just to jump in real quick, I think you're talking to the uh, the evolution of the music scene in this city in Correct. particular. Correct. Um, we've had festivals that we, you know, jokingly, but kidding, not kidding, called county fairs and, and didn't really feel like we hit a lot of home runs. And we were starting to with a new music venue back in the early part of that decade. And then when, when this festival came here in 18, it was a big deal for the for the community, just like, whoa, like something like the major leagues are here, yeah. right? And that's what it felt like to us anyway. Exactly. I don't was know it? I don't know if that felt like it to everybody. I mean, maybe you do so many festivals you don't really think about what level they might fall on. But for us that was a really, really big deal. And I think that's what Barry's talking about of that that moment with you and, and Drew and you know I would guess most people weren't expecting a killer song that night. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. <laughs> or that market, the, the kids, you know, I mean, the, tw the 20 to 30 year olds, that market. And so it's a big, big deal. And that's, you know, it's probably hard for you to say, you know, because you're on stage, but it was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that just that iconic of a song, too. There's this yeah. way of kind of disarming people because, you know, at festivals for us, um, obviously, being being a Tennessee boy and you know being a Nashville band, traveling up to Chattanooga and you know coming up the circuit at Chattanooga, where you know where we started out at Rhythm and Brews, yep, um, back in the day, and then you know playing small shows up to the um, what was the track, track, track twenty nine. That's what I was talking about. The venue that for they kind of started to bring in the acts yep. that we weren't used to getting. Yeah, um, and so getting to have that and then play Moon River. Um, and specifically, just I, I, you know, for us as a whole, it's like we, we are trying to generate moments and bringing people in on our music that don't might not know our music because um, you know we're at the time especially we're kind of up and coming young band. A lot of people don't really understand our music until they see us live, and so to have a song that kind of brings everyone together. I know this song. I, w I wasn't expecting Mr. Brightside with a banjo and with Drew and my goofy butt up there um, singing it. Uh, it's always really fun. Well, I have to go back just a, a, a step here. Our buddy Mike Dewar, who I'll, you know, who we talked ran to all that. Rhythm and Brews. Who ran so Rhythm and Brews. I got to know, what year roughly do you think you were playing Rhythm and Brews? Uh, you know that's a small room. Now, it was a it, locals, locally, we, we cherished that little tiny room. I don't know what everybody else thought about it playing it from a, a semi national to regional uh circuit but we cherish that room right. w w circa when were, was that a thing that would have been guys? like 14 for us uh 14 15. oh wow yeah so right at the end right at so, the end yeah i think it was right at the end right as it was closing yeah, down yeah yeah because i th i think we were we had sold it out and which was at the time for our band was like a big deal you know we were like holy crap we didn't know we had any fans <laughs> you made outside it. of nashville you know um but yeah, it was like such a fun. So we actually wanted to come back, and then we we found out that it you know it was kind of um, on its way out. But yeah, I mean honestly, Chattanooga for us has been such a special city. All all the shows are usually rowdy. It feels like we have like a, a core fan base here, you know, and um, it's always just been really sweet. Um, also for me, just a place where family can come and travel up from Cookville and, and be around. It's always really fun. That's very cool. So move forward a little bit. And, and again, I'm, I always interrupt Russ. I, he, he, he always has all these questions and I won't let him talk. Okay. Um, so you guys had kind of a transition, right? You've had, you, you've lost a member and you took a little time off. So how are, how's everything now with the band? You and Everything's Ryan. better than ever. I mean, I, I, and I can say that confidently because it's been kind of a rough last few years, um, just with a lot of personal life stuff happening in, during the pandemic, our banjo player, um, Decided just from his mental health and uh, other personal things, decided to step aside and um, kind of focus on 
what it was like to be living life outside of touring. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were doing 250 shows a year, so it was just it was a lot on all of our souls and hearts. And now um, it feels like there's a lot of uh, restoration happening. Like Nate, uh, who left the band, he's actually playing tonight with us. Oh, nice. Um, as well, and filling in for our bandmate uh, that just had a baby last night. Um, so there's like a lot of like really beautiful things happening uh, for the band, which is just really exciting, you know, because it, it feels like when when bands have breakups or members leave, uh, we're all kind of taught just in nature that, you know, it, it kind of leaves on sour notes. And, and that just wasn't true for us. Um, Nate was just in a spot personally where he just felt like he needed some time off. Um, so it feels really redeeming to kind of have our dog back. Well, that's the first question that everybody's going to have who do things like this, who talk music. What that? What happened? What happened? What, uh, who, who screwed over who? Yeah. Who, right. who, who? Who messed up? Yeah. You know, and sometimes that's just not the case. Yeah, it you was know? like a clean. And it's a difficult damn business, right? I mean, it doesn't. Not everybody can can keep up that grind. You know, I've, I've been told that by many others, local bands here I've talked to, and, and be like, "What happened, man?" It's like, this shit's hard, man. Yeah, life. And and we, you know, just it just didn't right. work. There's no story here. <laughs> Stop digging. Stop right. digging. Right. <laughs> right. That was it for us too. It's yeah. life. It's so interesting. We talked to, to Noah Cyrus earlier, and we've talked at Bonnaroo with many acts. The, the mental health thing is such a big issue today. And it, the one thing I would say is it's, it seems really good. Like camp was supposed to play last night, canceled, because it seems good to me that we're able to talk about it. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to dig. I don't need to know. But just to, for somebody to say, I just, you know, I needed to, I needed to walk away. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's hard for artists to um, when you're making living off of your dream and it is coming true in, in some sort of way to admit also how hard it is uh, just breaking into that point and how much you have to work to and sacrifice uh, to to really get to that point because we we've seen even like our heroes you know absolutely. you know back in the '90s early 2000s really have hard lives. I mean. Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain being one of my ultimate heroes, it was like, you know, the dude obviously had suffered a lot. Um, yeah. and But he's the biggest, one of the biggest rock stars of all right. time. And so you have to, there's this, I think this beautiful thing in music culture right now where there is this, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's acceptable to be like, yo, right. dude, I, I'm not okay. Like, yeah. I need to go back yeah. and go I, take care of yourself. Yeah. And, and so like kudos to Camp and Camp's team for, seeing the human and, and having his back because I, I think that that's Absolutely. obviously it, it the, the dude I can I don't I'm not going to speak for himself but I'm I'm sure he didn't want to miss this you know right. it's not like in right. his agenda to like miss awesome shows right um, but it's cool that in some sort of ways like mental health and um, self-acceptance and admitting like yo dude like I should I I should have this pride about it. I get to make music for a living get to play in front of thousands of people every night but at the end of the day, it's 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 hard for the the heart and the human. Um, yeah, absolutely. All right, I can see people hovering. You got to go. You got probably other interviews. <laughs> no, I think we're good. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I got one more thing. If we got a second, just yeah. to go back to the Belmont connection. I know that you, know, you said you played ball there, baseball. I'm a big baseball fan. I know their their basketball teams made some noise in the uh, in the tournament over the last 10, 12, whenever it was years. But what I noticed a lot when I was uh, just doing research on this year's festival in general, there's a lot of music I had no idea that, that originated at Belmont. And growing up in the 90s, into the 2000s, MTSU was that, that it kind of turned into if you're going to make music for the recording industry major, the REM program, they might have changed it, uh, what they call it now, I don't know. Has Belmont been a music factory for a long time, or is I mean I saw you know Moon Ta guys from Moon Taxi, guys from Coin who played here not long ago, uh, Brad Paisley. If I'm going only on my memory here right now, uh, You're right. blah blah blah. Was there a uh, Florida Georgia yeah. Line? Um, like okay. Brian Cal Kelly of Florida Georgia Line, he was the host on my recruiting visit. Leanne uh, from back in the day. Um, yeah. yeah. Is it is is that a competitive scene? Is it a place to to learn and 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 perform you I mean you're performing you're learning you're in, you're taking you know calculus one day and whatever <laughs> else the next maybe not calculus but yeah yeah <laughs> no no my, it is. my point is do you, is that a competitive scene in itself 
Oh, the bubble of Belmont is like terrifying. At least for me, like I, you know, every every kid from every small town that's the best musician in that small town is going into one spot. Yeah. And at least for me, like I was very intimidated when I walked in because you know you're, I was a music business major, but I wanted to do songwriting. Um, and you go there, and some freshman's already signed to a label, and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I'm doomed. I'm doomed. It's never going to work. I don't even have five songs recorded, you know, so. Uh, You know, the the line about the, I mean, I was in Nashville, which is, it's right outside of, but it's, you know, how many times have we heard people say, I, you know, I went to work and I moved to Nashville to be a musician and realized I'm not even the best guitar player in this restaurant where I work. Oh, right. Yeah. Or the, sh- the the dude that's playing on the street is right. ten times better yeah, than you. I'm not you. even the best dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's or true. Whatever. Yeah, so, and, and I think like I, I heard a quote about Belmont and the Nashville scene is like you can either allow it to intimidate you or to inspire you. And so I think with anything, with what y'all do, I'm, I'm sure like there's this comparison thing that just happens with human nature, but. I think deciding for that to inspire you versus it, it like crushing your joy or your spirit. I think that's like the choice that you have to make. Yeah, I mean, and the school's so prestigious for so many things. And I just, it was just in the last week that I realized how much of a factory of music that it's been. And I was pretty impressed by that. Jude, is it one of those things? And, 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 and I won't, we won't keep you too much longer, but I'm, I'm glad he brought it up. Is it one of those things where you go to a school like that to learn the, the technology and then you just say, all right, now I got to forget everything I just learned <laughs> and and do it my way. I think that, that that's kind of the truth. It's like the songwriting program is like they're, they're going to give you all the tools that you need to be a quote unquote good songwriter. But then, you know, for, for me, at least, I, I always got bashed on my songwriting um, for the songs that I was writing at the time. And they probably were terrible songs, but I feel like you have to kind of allow yourself as an artist to distinguish yourself as someone that's different that's not kind of cutting that mold and the big joke on the music business as you guys know is like uh, freshman year during like the convocation credit they, they te- so notoriously tell you in four years when you graduate this curriculum will be completely different <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking um, yeah. so it's just like I'm like trying to imagine a George Jones or a Merle Haggard going through you know a four year college oh yeah it doesn't yeah. work it doesn't work <laughs> it's like yeah uh uh-uh. uh all the good ones drop out. That, that's what they say. There it is. All right, man. Thank you so much for your time. You killed it again. One of your best. I killed it. This yeah. is one of my best interviews. I appreciate it. <laughs> one thank of you your guys. best ever. Jude, thank you so much. Right, thanks, Jude. Appreciate it. All right. So there you go. Like I said, that was a lot of fun. What a great guy and uh, seemed to enjoy talking to us and a big baseball guy. I know he and Brian Stone had some conversations about baseball and and it was fun getting the perspective of, of, you know, the going to college and what you can learn at college at a place like Belmont versus getting in a van and sweating (laughs) it out with a bunch of (laughs) sweaty people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, neat stories and uh, love, you know, it seems to be a common theme that comes up is, uh, you know, mental health and the importance of taking a step back when you need to. And, you know, because that's really what uh, happened with camp was they they were supposed to headline Saturday and they, you know, bowed out at the last minute. So, um, yeah. but, yeah, kudos for them for, for doing that. And We talked we talk to uh, Noah, and I won't give that away. She mentioned, you know, the mental health is a big part of uh, her songwriting and her performance. So uh, you're 100 percent right. It seems to be a theme that we have talked yeah, about more and more on this show. And it's becoming a part of the conversation. And that's the key. And that's good. Yeah, that's the key is, is people are finally starting to feel comfortable saying, you know what? I need help. Mm-hmm. I need a little help. And that's that's perfectly OK. So. All right, so there you go, guys. We will be back next week with uh, another show. And we're so glad to have uh, got to hang out at the Moon River Festival. And we've got more on the way. So thank you guys for listening, and uh, have a great day. See you next week. Consequence Podcast Network.